Welcome to the next video in the Patterns in Nature topic. This video is looking at the dot point, identify data sources, gather, process, analyze, and present information from secondary sources, and use available evidence to compare the digestive system of mammals, including a grazing herbivore, a carnivore, and a predominantly nectar feeding animal. So this picture shows the comparisons between the digestive system of those things that we are required to look at in the dot point. So we have We've included a human there just so we can see the comparison between our carnivore, our grazing herbivore, and our mostly nectar feeding organism. So we've chosen the honey possum as our predominantly nectar feeding organism. A carnivore could be any carnivore you would like to investigate. And the herbivore, we are going to look at a grazing herbivore. So you can pick any herbivores that, such as a cow, a horse, a goat, a deer, a kangaroo, um, and have a look at those in comparison between those three there. So in your booklet, there's a table that looks like this, looks like this. However, I've added some information here that you can get started on um, finding, and then you need to find the rest of the information yourself. So the herbivore, the chemical composition of the diet of a herbivore, as we know, is plant material, which is high in fiber, and the cellulose wall of the plant cells is difficult to break down. So as a result, the stomach is often is quite complex, often with multiple chambers to hold microbes that assist in microbial fermentation. So it's your job to find information about the oesophagus, the small intestine and the large intestines of the herbivores. And I've added here, just to finish off with the sacrum, the grazing herbivores such as cows, horses and kangaroos, which are foregut fermenters, have short to medium length sacrums. Where koalas, however, which are hindgut fermenters, have elongated sacrum. And we talked about that in our previous video. Uh, so the sacrum is the part that really holds the microbial organisms that help to break down the cellulose and the plant material in order to provide the uh, herbivores with as many nutrients from their food as possible. So moving on to our carnivore. Uh, we know that carnivores eat animal material, including flesh, bones, and the muscles of animals, which is high in protein, fat, and low in carbohydrates. As a result, carnivores have quite simple stomachs because the food is quite easy to break down. The pH of the stomach is extremely low because it has a lot more acids and enzymes within it than the stomach of herbivores. And it's those acids and enzymes that really help to break down the animal material really quite easily. Again, your job to find some information on the length of the esophagus, small intestine and large intestine. And lastly, the sacrum is poorly developed or may be absent, as we said, because of the role of the acids and enzymes in the stomach. We don't need the um, microbial fermentation like our herbivores do. And lastly, nectar feeding uh, mammal, which we said was our honey possum, very small, cute animal that eats pollen and nectar from flowers. So nectar is a sugary solution that's made up of sucrose, glucose, and fructose. So three different types of sugars made up of different structures of carbon atoms. However, it's low in proteins and minerals. So the stomach of a nectar feeding mammal is quite large in comparison to the size of its body and is two chambered. So what happens is digestion takes place in one chamber and then the second chamber is there to store the nectar so that, again, very similar to the herbivore, um, it's able to then rely on that second stomach to help release as many or to gain as many nutrients as possible. Again, your job to find some information on the esophagus, small intestine and large intestine. And the second of our nectar-feeding mammals is absent so just like our carnivores because the pollen is digested progressively through the intestines okay so digestion begins in the stomach and some digestion occurs there but then as the um, the undigested pollen moves through the intestines it is continuously digested so we don't have that microbial fermentation taking place either so what you're going to do from this information is in your um, booklet, there's a few questions for you to answer because we need to be able to use our secondary sources to um, be able to compare each of these different parts of the digestive systems. And then you need to present your information in a particular way. So what you'll be doing is creating a model of a digestive system. So you can choose either a um, 
grazing herbivore, a carnivore, or a nectar feeding organism. And there'll be a range of materials provided for you. And uh, it'll be your job to create a model that really shows the difference between the digestive system of each of these different organisms. And that brings us to the end of this video. And thank you for watching.